how did it go yesterday? It went very well, thanks, Colin. I was in a place called Bracknell, which, um, you know, of course, everybody says a handbag as soon as you say that, that place. Um, uh, a place I'd never been before, west of London, near Woking, um, uh, in, in, in the grounds of an arts centre, in their own amphitheatre, which they grandly call. Basically, they'd cut a bit of ground out and put some, put some flagstones in to hold the earth back. And uh, that was their amphitheatre. Um, uh, not exactly on the Roman or Greek scale, but uh, anyway, yeah, I was just saying that when, uh, usually when I do the show afterwards, you know, I talk to the audience and have a chat afterwards and they're usually very nice and say, how do you learn those lines? You know, the usual thing. But at the moment, it's, isn't this amazing, you know, to be within literally, in my case, because I'm quite a spitty actor, within spitting distance, <laughs> got to be careful with COVID, um, <laughs> of, of, of other people, you know, people yeah. that, that are not in your family or in your bubble or whatever no. it's called. Oh yeah, it was a great pleasure just to just to be with people, you know, one forgets how, yeah. well, no, one doesn't, but one's reminded how wonderful it is just to be in the company of people, especially in a theatre. So Into the Breach is a show about a man from Devon, loosely based on my grandfather. And the play is set in 1942, in the middle of the Second World War, in a village hall in Devon. And we hear in retrospect, it's told a year after the events of the play, um, we hear of how this man, George Crocker, who is the odd job man in the village in a very ordinary but inquisitive soul. Um, he's in his 50s. His life has sort of become very um, uncomplicated uh, and very uh, static in many ways. And he wants to shake it all up. He realizes that life's moving on and uh, he wants to do something in his life. So he joins the village drama club, hoping to play uh, a nice part in the village panto. But his plan is scuppered because this year a flamboyant and uh, experienced um, theatre director called Simon Trotley Barnes, who is very knowledgeable and very passionate about Shakespeare, has moved to the village. <clears throat> He's gone to the village because London is being bombed in the Blitz and a lot of people mainly children, but he has moved out to escape the London bombing. So he's moved to this tiny village in Devon and he doesn't want to do a panto this year, does Simon Trotley Barnes. He wants to do a Shakespeare play. So he does Henry V because it's in the zeitgeist. It's uh, arguably uh, um, a, a play that shows both sides of war, the bad side, the hor horrible side and the good side. So like Laurence Olivier, he, uh, he, Simon Trotley Barnes wants to use this play to educate the people of this small Devonshire village um, and uh, they go ahead and George starts off very very reluctantly playing chorus um, he thinks that Shakespeare is not for him but as he works on the play with Simon Trotley Barnes and his neighbour Miss Gloria Stubbs who he during the play forms um, quite an attachment to he begins to fall in love with Shakespeare and with life and with the lady next door and with Simon Trotley Barnes and most importantly with himself. And by the end, <clears throat> I won't, no spoilers here, Colin, but at the end, uh, a big, a big transformation has happened to this, to this simple soul. <clears throat> I've been doing this show now for five years. I've done about last night. I did uh, number 136. I think it was. Um, <clears throat> And it's been great, great fun. Honestly, I, I, I love this show now, like a sort of friend. Um, when I started doing it, um, there's a big section in it about the First World War. And I did it in uh, 2016 uh, to, 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 to tie in with what was going on about the First World War, the, hundred, the centenary of the finish of the First World War. So um, I wanted to do something um, that talked about the First World War. And of course now the, the whole centenary is, is, is long gone um, and people are not sort of doing lots of things about First World War anymore, but the, but, the sh but the show carries on. And you and I have both done lots of shows in our lives, in our careers, and some take off and some work and some don't. And thank goodness we don't know why that is. That's the magic and the wonder of it. And with this one, this is not in any way um, being 
um, arrogant. It's just chance and luck and whatever. Um, this one does chime with people. I, I never ever do a duffer of the show. And what I mean by that is I never um, look out front and see that people are twitching and talking and bored or leave in the interval or don't clap much at the end or don't laugh or, you know, uh, respond to it. I can tell because I play small venues and I can uh, see them. Uh, and so the show that I intended to do, I don't know, 10, 15 times for a couple of months has just, I can't give it up. I can't, I can't stop doing it. And it, and because demand is there and also because I'm not bored with it. Every time I do it, um, I love it. You know, I mean, as you know, the half, half an hour before the curtain up, sometimes one feels oh, I'd rather be watching the television this evening and having a beer. But by the time you step, um, step into the light, off you go. And uh, that certainly happens with Into the Breach. So uh, for the foreseeable, until I'm too old to do it anymore, I shall probably keep going. Fabulous. Tell me, in terms of the text of the show, how much is Shakespeare and how much is the further works of Mark Carey? Well, what, what, what it is, is in terms of the makeup between, I mean, it, it just seemed to me a good idea that if I was going to co-write a play with someone, <laughs> um, it wouldn't be a bad idea to write uh, a, a play with, with our old friend, um, William Shakespeare. Uh, it's uh, anyone, I think, well, not anyone, the vast majority of people who have ever had any sort of interest in theatre can realise what a towering, um, uh, brilliant, fantastic playwright he is, much more eloquent than I'm being at the moment. Um, and so uh, it's what I try to do is to make the play <clears throat> sort of an introduction to Shakespeare. So it's enjoyable for people who know their Shakespeare, <clears throat> but it's also enjoyable for people who don't know a thing about it. So they go on this journey with George, not liking Shakespeare, not thinking it's for them, not being able to relate to it in any way. And by the end of the play, hopefully, they've had their interest um, uh, tickled. So uh, to answer your question about how much is Shakespeare and how much is me, it's, it, it, Shakespeare takes over as the play goes on. The first section is probably a lot more me than is Shakespeare, but then as his interest grows, as George interest grows, Shakespeare becomes more and more. So the second half, there's a lot more Shakespeare than there is me. Um, partly I did that because that's the way it uh, evolved as I wrote it, but also I realised that if people come who are allergic to Shakespeare, they don't want a lot of it early on. I'll try and get them involved in the story and then um, hit them with big chunks of Shakespeare in the second half. Hopefully by that, mo by that time they're in evolved enough in the tale to not stand up and walk out. 